Hi, this is Marty, and welcome back for another video. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about funnymoney.com, balance sheet recession, Richard Koo, brilliant man, look him up, read everything, study this man, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, debt cycles, uh, the 100 year and the 7 to 10 year, and fiat currency lifespan. In this video, I'm going to cover all this, and lastly, I'm going to cover central banking theory as it relates to this, this, <laughs> this, and come back to that. And in the end, you're going to understand what I believe COVID-19 is all about. Not conspiracy. I promise it's not conspiracy. Just hear me out. All right. So first things first, I need to lay the foundation. So what I want you to do is Go to funnymoney.com and you'll need a valid email address and you will need uh, your cellular phone. And when you register at funnymoney.com, no, this is all real, I promise, you're going to get for free once in your life, only once, because you need the email and the cell phone, and I'm assuming you're not going to have another email and cell phone and all that, right? When you register, you're going to get one time and one time only. And you can never get it any other way except from someone else. I swear. Go now and register and you will be able to log in and see that you were given for free. You didn't have to do anything. I'm going to give you 10,000 funny money. And then you can read the questions and the learning and all that good stuff. I just want you to understand that it's free. You don't have to do anything to get it. But it's the foundation for this video and what I'm talking about. Oh, and I own funnymoney.com and I designed it and I did everything with it. So go ahead and do it. Have fun. All right, so the first thing that I need to, to, to explain is modern banking. So basically, we're gonna take, uh, say for example, Bank of America. So we'll go ahead and draw this, and we'll go this, and we'll go B of A. Okay, Bank of America. We're gonna take one bank and one customer. So this person here gives the bank $100. Make this very, very simple for you. When this person gives the bank $100, the bank now pays an interest on that money. But that's not the important thing we care about here. What we care about is what the bank does with the $100. Well, the bank is going to take that $100 and put it on its balance sheet as an asset because it now has $100. But it's not their money. It's really this person's money. But shh, we don't want to talk about that, okay? Because if there are a million people that all have 100 and they go and get their money all at the same time, that's where the problem starts. But in this example, very simple. The bank loans out the $100 and gets another customer to give $100. What is the bank now doing with the first 100 Earning interest on money that's not even theirs. So let's say, for example, when number one customer comes in and says, give me my $100, he takes that $100, the bank is whole, no problem. But what happens when both customers come in and try to get 200. The bank doesn't have it because they loaned out half of it to this smiley person. Where does the bank go for the $100 or the 200? To the central bank and they borrow it overnight. That is modern banking. Very simple. That's it. Now, here's the question. What is a fiat currency? A fiat currency is a currency that is not backed by gold or anything. It's a piece of paper. Like go to Office Depot, walk in, buy a ream of paper that has 500 sheets in it. There is no difference between a stack of Office Depot paper in that ream and if you were to take uncut $100 bills on an eight and a half left, like three of them up, three of them up eight and a half left and stuck them in there, it's the same. It's paper and it burns the same. We have not been on the gold standard since 1970 when France asked us for the gold on the debt we owed them. And guess what the United States said to France? We did it. Look it up. Google it. Okay. So that's what a fiat currency is. Now, what is one of the most important factors of a fiat currency? A piece of paper that's backed by nothing. No gold, no nothing. 
that it all goes in the same bank and looks the same. So all three of these people who have $100 with this bank in some financial arrangement are all looking at the same $100 bill. It looks the same. It's called being fungible. Meaning when you put three of the same thing, which one's mine? I have no idea, but it doesn't matter. Why? Because they're all the same thing, all backed by nothing. That is modern banking. Now this is my favorite part. Did you go to funnymoney.com and get your 10,000 funny money? What are you waiting for? It's free. I'm giving you 10,000 funny money. And you say to me, but it's not worth anything. I said, what do you mean it's not worth anything? Yes, it is. It's the same as the US dollar. And you say, that's impossible. How can it be? It is the same. Want me to prove it to you? I'm just the guy. Both are backed by nothing. The US dollar is not backed by gold or silver or anything. Oh, and by the way, the petrodollar, mm, yeah. That really doesn't matter anymore. And all you have to do is look at the chaos behind the scenes that's going on with OPEC and uh, the uh, uh, Middle East and, and all that good stuff. Okay, um, it, 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 it's still very valid, but, but it doesn't matter anymore. And the real reason it doesn't matter anymore is because of the debt levels. But we'll get that into a second, okay? Because I got to go into something else first. Okay, so basically both are backed by nothing. There's no difference. You still don't believe me. Tough crowd. I mean, tough crowd. I'm giving you 10,000. Look, the government said they were going to give everybody $10,000. Where's my money? Well, I'm giving it to you. Go to funnymoney.com, go get your 10,000, but it's not really 10,000 because I denominated them. I was asked, well, what is it worth? You know, it's got to be worth something, okay? So let me go further into this and let me discuss why they are basically the same exact thing. And I promise you, they are. So you say they're not the same. Trust me. Remember, I always have to prove something with some angle on it, and trust me, so if you didn't get your funny money, go get your funny money in, come back, turn on the video, and I'm going to prove to you that the U.S. dollar and funny money are the same exact thing. All right. What is the U.S. dollar? The U.S. dollar is equal to a medium of exchange. That's it. That's all that it is. Because you're never really gonna take your dollar and go to the central bank or, or go to the Federal Reserve and go, hey, in, in like in pre-1970s, can I have my silver? Can I have my gold? No, you're not gonna do that because you need the money to buy shoes and buy, buy stuff, right? Okay, so the US dollar is a medium of exchange. Funny money, let's abbreviate that. FNY, MNY is equal to the same. And you say to me, ah, Marty, you don't even know what you're talking about. You can't play central bank and create something out of thin air. I did. You want me to prove it to you? Again, tough crowd. All right, I'll prove it to you. Watch. Number one. Number two. And number three. So, a medium of exchange. Simple economics. And this is the basis for all economic theory, supply and demand, and everything that planet Earth sits on top of as it relates to fiat currencies as a medium of exchange. If I have this pen in my hand, if I value the dollar more than I value this pen, I'm not going to exchange it. The point is this, when you have a fiat currency, a medium of exchange, you are basically saying that you value, if you purchase or do not purchase, the value of the money more than the object that you're parting with your fiat currency. So you go buy a pack of gum, it's a buck at the grocery store, whatever, so I value the gum more than I value the dollar, thank you, I chew my gum, and I'm happy, right? If I don't, I walk out, I don't buy it, okay? The second part of a medium of exchange and why currencies are so important is because let's say you have three different people Okay. And this person has gum, this person has an apple, and this person has, a, what is this, a pen. 
Well, what happens when all three of these individuals get in a room and they say, I don't want what anyone has in this room and I don't want what I have. No economy can happen. Enter fiat currency. Give them all 10 of them. Number two says, hey, I want a pack of gum. Number one says, two bucks. Number two says, too expensive. Number three says, I'll pay it. Two goes there, pack of gum. That, <laughs> that is the economy. Supply, demand, and how a universal fungible fiat currency, the US dollar or any paper currency on planet Earth for that matter, works. And it is simple as that. Enter funnymoney.com, an equal medium of exchange. I just gave you 10,000 funny money. Go find a friend who has something you want and the friend doesn't care about it. Toilet paper. Neither one of you have a job, and neither one of you want to spend your hard-earned, valuable U.S. currency. So, tell your friend to go on funnymoney.com and say, look, but really, and wait for it, because this is the other side of fiat currency and economics, and what the central bank does. The central bank is in charge of price stability. So they say, we only want 2% inflation, and they say, we're in charge of keeping prices the same. Why is that such an important economic factor of central banking theory in planet Earth and our daily lives? Because the value of a currency on Monday is equal to the value of what I purchased on Sunday. So therefore, in Sunday, I went and bought a pack of gum for a dollar, and on Monday, I go into the same store looking for that pack of gum, and it's two dollars. I'm going to say, what the F? I was just here yesterday and it was a buck. The store owner says, I'm sorry, supply and demand. Well, I'm going somewhere else. Well, it's a good thing you can go somewhere else and the economy is so vast and gum is on every street corner because guess what? You're gonna go buy that for a dollar and tell that guy $2, I value my money more than I value the pack of gum. It's only worth a dollar. That is the <laughs> economics 101 and central banking theory. The debt cycles and balance sheet recession. That's next. Have you got your funny money yet? All right, now I'll be quick with this, okay, because this stuff gets a little boring, but I'll make it simple. Debt cycle. Now, if you're not an economic person, you understand the debt cycle, I'm gonna explain it. Don't, don't fast forward, because this is, this is important, okay? All right, so here we go. The debt cycle is basically the beginning of time and how much debt is created. Basically, that's it. All debt implodes all fiat currencies. Fiat currencies implode. Period, end of story. In the history of planet Earth, all currencies have been debased, meaning inflated out of existence. And I'm sorry, but the US dollar and all currencies underneath it, or I should say this on top of it, is no different. Okay, so basically this is the massive hundred year debt cycle, but it's not. That is fiat dollar implosion. This is what we are witnessing. Richard Koo states, when a government needs to service its debt and it can't, it must now produce and pay off its debt. And it does so when it needs to borrow and or pay its debt. And in this tumultuous garbage of debt and fiat-based currencies, it's going to change its currency into other currencies and sell off its debt in a very complicated paper shuffling mess. Richard Koo and his brilliance works inside of a long-term debt 
cycle. But when you are witnessing the implosion, the inevitable absolute debasement of a currency, which the US dollar is, because all other currencies and assets, everything is based on the US dollar. It's just a fact. No currency is gonna step in and replace the dollar, period, end of story. So you're not witnessing long-term debt. We're past that. And what is in between here? short-term debt cycles. Well, actually, I should, actually, this is wrong. This should be out here. What we are going through and what you are witnessing is the destruction, replacement, rearrangement of the US dollar and finances behind the scenes. That's what this is. And by the way, Brilliantly done Federal Reserve with COVID-19. Brilliantly done. I know that I just went conspiracy theory totally off the deep end. I want to ask one question. Has there ever been an event in recorded history, and I mean go back thousands of years, where the economy was shut down to save lives. Comment below on that one when you find it, because I have yet to find it. It's not important to understand long-term debt cycles, this one, and short-term. What is important to understand, the global, or I should say debt levels, are hundreds of trillions. and it can never be paid back, ever. Now I know a big question you're thinking is, well, you just gave away 10,000 funny money, but well, this doesn't make any sense to me. I didn't do anything for it. Well, that's actually a brilliant thing to think because it's exactly right. You see, when the US dollar was backed by uh, gold, you had to be productive to get it. You had to go do something, produce, be productive. The only way to get gold was to mine for it production or go work for someone who was looking for it or go build something to produce the current financial us dollar backed by nothing fiat currency is based on and google it on youtube you don't have to look very far is based on the creation of debt how do i go and be productive go borrow money go into debt from the bank from a friend that's it because where are you going to go mine for gold or you can go get it. So your very existence and how you start your day is based on debt. And guess what? The US dollar is nothing more than debt to the tune of hundreds of trillions of dollars. Back to the original statement. That's the problem with central banking theory is that they just create it out of thin air. And you want to know how they do it? <laughs> I just did with funnymoney.com. Go to funnymoney.com and I'm going to give you 10,000 funny money. Then go to your friend, family member, whatever, and say, hey, go to funnymoney.com and go get 10,000 funny money. They're gonna look at you like, what? Just, just go do it. Have them go do it. And then go get an object that you own, whatever it is, and ask them, what's this worth to you? Do you want it? They say, well, yeah, you know I want it. And when you ask them, what's it worth to you? Pay me in funny money. And they say, I'll give you 10. Deal done. You now understand central banking theory perfectly. I am creating money as a medium of exchange out of thin air, and you don't have to do anything for it as long as you find someone, wait for it, who thinks it has value like you do, and this is the most important thing, that you will accept it tomorrow. Oh, and that you will be able to give it back to them. You see, the only way to earn funny money once you go and get your 10,000 is to either 
be productive by selling something or be productive by working, such as a child doing chores. Pay them in funny money. What's the freaking difference? Oh yeah, you can't go on, you can't take it and, 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 and put it um, into the banking system. Ah. See, now we're getting into power. See where this is going? Now let's discuss the power of creating a medium of exchange, such as the US dollar, that is basically created out of thin air, just like I did with funnymoney.com. Let's talk about power. So what power does the central bank have? All I did was take a website and put a check register on it and said, if you have a valid email address and a valid cell phone, you're going to get 10,000 funny money. Do whatever you want with it. The power of the central bank is this. Wait for it. The ability to, <laughs> to, well, what word do I want to use? Let's use the right one. Clear uh, its own check. What does that mean? Well, it basically means that the central bank can write a check, walk into Bank of America, deposit it into a Bank of America account, and Bank of America will then clear that check, and on the back end is the central bank who will clear it and put that money in that account, in US dollars or whatever currency we're talking about. How would you like to be able to walk into Bank of America, deposit $1 million into an account, then go home, then go on your computer, look at Bank of America, get an email, hey, this check is needing to be cleared, do you approve it? Approved. Then the next day, walk into Bank of America and withdraw $1 million cash. That is the power of the central bank, and that is exactly what they can do. All central banks eventually fail, and the reason why they fail eventually is because economic fiat currency model always fails, and the reason it fails is because of because central banking is based on the theory of debt creation. Okay, let's do this. Still don't believe me, huh? Go to funnymate.com. Everyone register in your family, okay? You got two kids, three kids, four kids, all the better, right? Tell them, you clean your room, and I'm going to give you 300 funny money. You think your kids aren't going to go and clean their room? My question would be, well, why? Because it's a medium of exchange and because the value of it is in the production of the effort. They are being rewarded by a medium of exchange that they believe they are going to be able to do something with it. And who is going to give them that? You are. And when they find out what it is, it's up to them to create the economy between them. And what is that based on? Trust and faith. That they will be able to do something with their hard-earned reward done now the issue is is well wait a second you just gave them ten thousand why do they want more primary human emotion greed are you kidding me with that now your second question might be well wait a minute you're just giving it out well 
That really didn't produce anything. Ah. And here is the central banking theory, number one problem. If I can't get it with gold, how do I get people to trust and use it? I'm telling you how, but when you're talking about a country, come on, but this is how you give it out. How do you give it out without ruining the value of it? Oh, see, that's fiat currency central banking problem number two. But if you can hurdle number one and you can hurdle number two and get this, guess what you now have? Power. And the reason why you have power is because you create out of thin air the medium of exchange for people to live and be happy. And where do you sit on all of this? In this case, on top of the U.S. government. Did you go get your funny money yet? So in closing, funny money is nothing more than a barter system, medium of exchange, very much like the U.S. dollar, is given trust and faith in an economic environment between individuals who want to exchange goods and services that they do not have or what they want. That's it. And it's pretty much as simple as that. We can't go back to barter. No one creates anything anymore. We must have a medium of exchange that we have faith in and that we trust. This is Marty, and we'll see you in the next video.